Monday the 6th of December, and it's um, half past seven, so we'll start the Parish Council meeting, Hilton Parish Council, hopefully Sharon will be able to join us. Um, apologies for absence, we have apologies from Kieran, Ian and Sarah. Um, Council F may be late due to work, however, he put his foot down <laughs> and got it. Fine, thank you, Ed. Um, so, declarations of interest. Anyone got any declarations of interest for items on the agenda? No? Okay. Right. Um, I'm going to ask a question then. When we get to the bit that says there's a request from the community garden, have a Chair, I'm chair of the garden. Yes. Okay then. Yes. <laughs> Do you need to carry on? Not that I have to guide you. Because we talked about that earlier. Guiding people. <laughs> right. Um, so there's an expression of interest from Heather regarding the community garden. Um, thank you very much. Right. The next bit is to close the parish council meeting and open the floor to members of the public. And oh, well, sorry. We've also got an apology from County Councillor Sudji. But he's given you a report which you're going to deliver on his behalf. Thank you. So, uh, post parish council meeting, open the floor to members of the public and to receive reports from the county and district councillors. Members of the public. No, nothing. Okay, thank you very much. Nicola, uh, Doug's a minute Three comments from Doug. Um, we're pleased to announce that Phil Harvey has been appointed as our local highways officer, so we have to have an appointed uh, highways officer now. Um, there is a flood document uh, consultation coming up shortly, but he wants to make it clear he's not happy with the time scales that are on this document. I haven't had sight of it yet, but I'll just read it once now. Um, and that the budget is still a work in progress and he will update us when he has further information. <laughs> And I'll just mention that we met with Doug and we'll discuss the outcome of that meeting when we get to the appropriate agenda item number 159. So, uh, thank you very much. Right, we'll close the open session of the meeting and revert back to Parish Council meeting. The first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the Parish Council meeting held on the 1st of November. You all had those? Anybody happy? I'll take it that they are, and therefore I will um, propose that those minutes are adopted. Thank you, Rob. All those in favour? Can we hear? Yeah. The next item is minutes of the planning meeting held on the 25th of November. Now, I wasn't actually at that meeting. Um, and Sharon's almost here. Is, is two enough? Two is enough. One, yeah. one vote can carry the budget. I vote two, second. I'll second that. All in favour? Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, it's coming up later in the meeting. It's, uh, what we, what we said. It's only a recommendation. Yeah. <coughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, it was. It was to look at the Huntington District Council landscape and townscape supplementary planning document for the consultation. That's what that uh, Clark's report is the next item on the agenda. So I have sent a list of highway matters to the county councillor who has forwarded them to the relevant officers, which is now Phil, um, including the potholes in Scotts Close, the two large elms in Sparrow Way, one of which has a hollow trunk and one of which has bracket fungus, um, the overgrown ivy on the corner of the alleyway from Sparrow Way to Blackdale Road, uh, the road valleys, which are blocked outside 10 to 14 Cotton Road. The veteran elm on Gravely Way, just to inform them that there is an issue and that the PC have agreed to work. And the same with the Leylandi on Gravely Way near the Bollards. Um, I sent them pictures of the Sigmore near the Crossroads Pond, which is now obstructing and damaging the footpath. Um, clearing responsibility for the management of Tide Lane with them and also informing the county council of the incident on the zebra crossing. Um, I have received a receipt from the Royal British Legion uh, with confirmation that £1,515.45 is the total rate in Hilton, which is a big number. I have received correspondence from the uh, UK Civil Aviation Authority to say that they've approved the airspace change 
uh, that the cash traps were consulted on recently uh, relating to London Region Airport. Um, and the revised air space will become effective on the 24th of February. Uh, the volunteers have installed the Christmas lights on the pavilion. Um, and there was an incident on the 9th of November at the Zebra Crossing on Cotton Road where a stationary motorbike was knocked onto the crossing by a car. Luckily, no one was hurt, which very luckily because it was uh, school bus time in the morning. Um, and I have emailed the county councillor to ask that the crossing markings are reconnected. Thank you. Good. And then the next one is a review of national decisions, decisions made under scheme delegation. Now we've been busy this month. Right. right, so the clerk submitted the response to the combined authorities' um, transport connectivity plan consultation. This was another consultation that came in. And we, we did it. was too short. Yes. As we will find, there is another consultation, but we'll come on to that at the end. Councillor's on to that. Um, the trees that were going to plant in the Jubilee Cops, the cost had, ris had risen by £48.75. So, under the little bit of additional spend I can authorise, we authorised that and got it um, so that the trees could be purchased. I understand that there's some things out on the green showing where it's going to be. Um, Clark, yeah, the the Christmas lights have been put up, thank you very much. Um, there was a message in Spectrum. Oh, we altered the uh, Spectrum article to say that for Christmas. Um, we are aware that um, Cambridge County Council have put the LHI bid to ban HGV traffic on the B1040 out of public consultation closed on the 17th of December, so please. Tell your neighbours, tell your friends to get on us and support us in that respect. We have a leaflet, um, which we've uh, authorised because I authorised the cost of full quid, um, which is in the process of being delivered for every house, and you put it out on the telegraph. And um, it's just to try and encourage as many people as possible to support this thing. Go online and make comment, please, saying yes. Ban HGVs. Um, that's going to go on the website. It's still on the website. It's, it's going to be too late for Spectrum. Yes. Be no, there won't be another Spectrum, will there? Um, Parish Council, Facebook again, just as a reminder at some point along the way. Then we have got the um, item regarding the judicial res re the possibility of a judicial review on the decision made by the Planning Development Committee to approve the um, application for outline planning for six uh, sitting houses, 60% affordable houses at the end of Church End. We had a meeting with Doug and he suggested we speak to somebody at Houghton Witten who had um, already conducted a judicial review a few years ago. And the initial information we had back indicated that we might have been, by the time we had had that meeting, that might be too late. But it, as we've subsequently found out, as Nicholas subsequently found out, until such time, you get six weeks to um, instruct a judicial review on a um, planning application, and that six weeks is from the time the decision to. The decision notice is The published. decision notice is published. Now, that hasn't been published yet. So. There was a chance that we could speak to solicitor, of course, they don't do anything for free, and the solicitor came up with some suggestions of contacting HGC and finding out on what basis they were challenged legally, on what basis did they change their mind, because actually what, what's written up in the minutes of the meeting seems to show that it was due process. What else did they want? Did they challenge uh, Copies of the legal advice that they were given that um, challenge the procedural error. Right. And, um, but to get things going, they wanted some money from us. And the initial part of the works will take, will cost up to £1,000. So, we agreed to do that on the basis that if 
once we get, we're discussing greater depth when we get to 159, um, if they come back and say yes, there is grounds for 117 that information, then we'll hold an extraordinary meeting to discuss whether or not we want to do it. And the cost implications thereof, because it could cost us up to 30 odd thousand pounds, um, but let's, we thought it would be wise to actually find out whether there was any mileage in doing it. Houghton Witten funded their judicial review vote by crowdfunding. So that's what we're told, isn't it? Or you were told. Um, so we might just, um, we'll be looking at that. And after we found out the next stage, we will look at an extraordinary team to discuss. Because we're not due a meeting until February the something or other. So, thank you. So we'll do that. If that's okay, done. Um, posts have been placed around the wilderness to show where the Jubilee cops have been planted. Open spaces opposite to where the park. You've moved on to the next item, I think. Oh, I thought that was all part of the, the uh, delegated decisions report. Sorry. No, that's open spaces. Oh, is it? Is that all open spaces? Forget that. I redact that. Um, so that's where we are with items under the scheme delegation. The planning bit will discuss in depth when we get to. 159, although I've probably given you as much information as really? to do. Okay. So Any questions? No, on that one is the fact that it exceeds the limit of scheme delegations but is authorised under extreme risk to deliver in council services. There we go. Mr. Chairman. John. Um, regarding your costs, are you aware that your supplier closes on Thursday to way after New Year? Supplier for what? Please. Trees. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure we will notify our tree officer to remind him. Thank you. Okay. Right. Sorry, I've got a point of information about the LHI. Do you want it now or at the end? The LHI did. HGV one. It's on the agenda, but we'll do, yeah, it's at 149. Never. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Lovely. Um, great, thank you. So we're going to one or six, which is pretty. Would you uh, like to ratify them? They're done. They're decided. Um, I, I resolve that we uh, ratify those decisions. Seconded by Grant. All those in favour? There we go. Thank you. Three, uh, three. Difficult doing this last. But there we go. Um, maintenance contract. Green Open Spaces Working Group to receive the report from the group. Working group. Unfortunately, the main team, the group aren't here tonight, so I've been um, asked to do this, so you'll excuse me if it doesn't flow as well as it would do from the deal. Posts have been placed around the wilderness to the spot to show where the Jubilee Cops will be planted. Open Spaces Officer, together with the clerk, have met with the grounds maintenance companies and dredging contractor, and that will come up with those bits in a minute. Open Spaces Officer, together with the clerk, has met with the parishioner regarding the placement of species of a memorial tree agreed in the November meeting. The specific location was agreed in the far corner of the wilderness and the species will be a white beam. And we discussed that last week and this was going on about an earlier thing we'd had about memorial trees being planted and a mapping thereof. So that's a report from uh, the working group. We then got to have some slightly meaty ones. Now, the first thing is the maintenance contract. To discuss and provide actions with regards to the maintenance contract, uh, costs between eight and twenty-six thousand to five hundred and ninety-five pounds. So, I've got to find the other bit here. Just have to excuse me for a minute. Once I get the right document up. Right, so, the maintenance contract has been out for tender and there have been a number of quotes received. You'll have to correct me as I go on the quotes bit. So there's three, quote, uh, three main quotes and then three supplementary quotes. There, there's four contractors, uh -huh. three of which have quoted, two of which have quoted the entire contract. Yeah. One has quoted for parts of the contract, and the other one I have contacted to, to 
take those select bits that weren't included in quote C. Oh, okay. So the three, the three bits at the end, the seven four eight six hundred and fourteen thirty two, all from one contractor. No. So um, D is a separate contractor who yeah. has an hourly rate. Oh, okay. Who could do the garden and the trimming of the churchyard? Right. That leaves the ditches not included. Yeah. So I haven't got specific quotes for the ditches. So I've taken the ditch element out of A and B so that you've got a comparative price. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. So as you can see, items the contractor C doesn't want to include the garden, playground, and ditches or the string of the churchyard. Is this correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so if we were to accept items contractor C, we would need to look at getting those elements done separately. Those elements look like they could be done to bring the total deal within the £10,000 that's been proposed in the budget for the year ahead. If, um, if we accept C and the three other quotes, that does keep it within the budget. Um, it does wake us up to the fact that if and out somebody comes along for the full contract, there's likely to be a significant price, price increase. And I think, is it fair to say that contractor C is offering to do this for two years? So if the council resolved to accept contractor C, then it gives two years, well, 18 months to do a lot of hard work on getting a contract, reviewing what is within the tender document, to see whether or not it can be done for a reduced figure, because otherwise the precept would just go on. Well, we wouldn't have enough money, in fact. No, I mean, we met with Contractor B, who was very impressive, knew his stuff, but we walked away and said, I can't afford him. Yeah. So you've got any questions? Are we actually required to make a decision tonight? Um, you're it's, it's, it's to to have sorry? You're required to make a decision on the budget. Yeah, yes, I'm right. sorry. So we, it's good to have these figures so that we, when we come to this other budget, we know what's coming up. But I mean, have we had any comment from Green Open Spaces now? As in the Ian officer? Because obviously he would need to be involved. Would he be involved? No. I mean, we haven't. No, I've, no. I've had some informal discussions with him as we've been walking around the room. Cool. But, uh, no, you don't need to make a decision on this tonight from a time scale point of view. And did we, when did we put the closing date? 29th of um, November. So the closing date is passed on the 10th. Okay, so we've, we've had all the quotes we're going to get. Okay. And the current contract runs out next week. Yeah. So we need to get a good break. What does contractor D mean? Sorry, contractor D. Seems to be a very different amount of money. This is for uh, um, maintaining the village garden and stringing the church. So it's just open. those elements. You could try to get more information regarding the last three before the next meeting. Yep. I would like to hear you. Yeah. I mean, there's not a problem with the time, is there? In terms of place, you know, if we agreed in February, we could advise the various contractors straight away the day after, couldn't we? Gives them sort of two months to get sorted. Yeah, 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 I'm not sure that would be all right. But I mean, it's great that we've got these quotes because it gives us an indication that our budget is not <laughs> exactly flush. It does emphasise having 20 odd acres of green open space. It does a common cost. And a huge cost. Potential huge cost, and what a great deal we've had over the last few years, in fact. So, uh, there you go. So I resolve that we delay the decision on this until um, the next meeting. Yeah. Oh, sorry, no. All those in favour? There you go. Everybody, right, the next one is to discuss and decide upon actions with regards to dredging of ponds, cost. So, quotes were um, received, obtained, sought and obtained, for dredging five ponds within the village. And there's the range of, on the agenda, told you that these, uh, these um, quotes came in between um, 
Oh, there are two quotes, one at 39,500 and the other at 29,700 pounds. Now, as a result of the last meeting, the clerk has compared, prepared an application for a fund of grant, uh, and that's been submitted together with a recovering letter from Doug June. Um, so really, there's nothing to decide, because we can't go ahead until we know whether or not we've got the grant, and then that might have an implication anyway. So, um, I resolve that we carry this item forward to the next agenda because we might have some more information about that. And should there be a decision on a grant that says you must have an answer within the X, we'll call a meeting to discuss it. Big money, isn't it? Sorry? Big money. It's huge money. It's huge, but that does uh, also involve removal of the material. Yeah, the same as or whatever. Yes. In a safe manner. So there you go, I resolved it back. It's fun for on the basis you might have an update. And thank you, Nicola, for submitting the, um, the application for the grant. Anybody want to second that? Thank you, Heather. Always in favour. Right, the next one is to. Would that grant cover all of this? Possibly. We don't yeah. know until we know until we get off the bat. Uh, there was some you know, you can tick but boxes on there to say that you know, match funding and that sort of thing, but we're talking about this kind of money, match funding is going to work. Uh, the next one is the uh, path between the church and church lane. So more quotes, more spread of cost. Um, And the one that, the, so the, the minute it's it's tarmacked, isn't it? And um, you've got an an extract from the Common Law Act, 2006, which tells us basically because it is being resurfaced. If we go for resurface with tar, we can do it without thingy. Um, the resurfacing with tar is the most realistic one, it's G on the list there. So it's tar and chip. Tar and chip. So you put a layer of hot bitumen down, gravel over the top, which is then rolled in. So it looks like a gravel path, but is uh, set firm. Okay, that sounds good. Certainly it's the most realistic financially. But it doesn't say it's the same as what we're saying now, is it? Sorry, for the church. I mean, I, the only thing I would have thought is that it matches the church part. I I thought it was, but when I got the time back and out and I said, What's this what? And they went, Oh that's time chip. Oh, that's time chip. Yeah. So this this would match. This would match the third part and he would cut it out um, in the gateway so that it was then level with the church path that was going to form soon. I'm going to resolve that the parish council would stretch the path to be relayed at the cost of with contractor G at two pound and fifty pound. Plus an asset should we get that. back? I've got a sign. Are we concerned about the level? He's not taking all the lot out, is he? Because it's no, is it raised? Because I think it'd be nice to level with the grass, wouldn't it? <coughs> I'm not sure how it stands. He talks about removing the um uh, the unsteady stuff and uh, stabilising it, but I'm not too sure about how level and in line with the grass is going to be. Do we know his name? Hmm? Do we writing doesn't. Do well, that's true. Right? Right? The other thing is, are we, do we know very much about the contract chief? Has he, has he she got a, a landline? I met with him, yes, yes. I met with him at the limited company. Right. Uh, they do a lot of work for the county council. He sent me copies of all of his traffic management qualifications okay. and his okay. liability insurance. Right, okay, so he's ready to go with him. That's a good, that's a good point. Thank you. Mm. Uh, in terms of level, he will, where, where some of the path has degraded so much that it's just gravel, but mm. the, the tarmac's completely gone. Yeah. So he'll actually lay new tarmac there yes. to level it completely right. before the tar and chips just effectively are topping over that. But in, do, in so um, doing, he's going up, isn't it? He will do, but it's, it's, only, it's a sprayed on layer of tar with a layer of gravel on the top. But it's not going to raise you by much. It's not, and I guess um, 
The question is, when you do it during the winter, when there's a chance of frost damage. He recommended January. Okay. Any other thoughts? I don't know time to look through the detail of it, but obviously G is a bit less money. Mm -hmm. so it's not as it seems capable. Or this is the guy. He really wanted the was. work. Oh, right. I've told him what prices I've had elsewhere. Okay. And he really wanted to work, so he came in just look at the underneath. Okay. And it's guaranteed for five years. I'm still going to resolve that we set to go for the contractor G and get it done. I'll second that. Thank you, Rachel. We're in favour. Lovely. Right, the next is to discuss and decide upon pleasant plaque for the Jubilee Cops cost. And there's a range of costs, and you've got some lovely pictures of the types of um, um, plaques that are available. And um, there it is. And recommendation probably is that the European oak plaque, because the wording is as per, uh, is laid out by HRH's team. And um, the oak plaque costs £37.50. So, uh, any questions? In that case, I resolve that the proposed that the parish council proceeds with the European oak plaque costing £37.50 plus that, but we get the VAT back. Thank you, Heather. Seconded all those in favour? Good. Right, um, so JSC Services have discussed with Nicola and Councillor Stott um, recutting the males to bring it back to the English Heritage suggestion of 18 inches. This has um, been done three times previously by JSC Services, 30 hours, and the um, JSC Services are proposing that there's a cost of £675 to do this. Um, obviously, the maze is our historic monument within the village. There is a little bit of unspend this year, I believe, at the moment. And unspend is there to be spent. Um, um, any questions? Because I'm proposing that we do it. Because it is our most important historic. Well, almost our most important It's getting smaller, isn't it? Sorry? The gap is getting smaller, so yeah. it is doing it. And it's done very well when it's done. Mm. When JSC services do it. So I'm going to propose that we do it. Eh? We'll also get the second one. We've got a second to that. All in favour? Yeah. There we go. Thank you, JSC. Uh, right. Next on the item is uh, 146.7 to discuss and decide upon the request of the Community Garden Committee to use funds donated by the Hilton Mark Life Conservation Group to renovate the ditch alongside the Community Garden to improve the habitat for water gold and plants in British bluebells and wild garlic in the grove. Now, Heather, you might want to tell us something about the ditch. Yes, so um, we met with the three remaining people, I don't know if it's three remaining people, three members of the previous conservation group who are keen to wind up the group but make sure the money is spent on the conservation um, things within the village. Um, the community garden then reported back to the community garden committee and from that meeting we looked at the ditch and the ditch is just too big a job for us to do. So we'll so scratch that, scratch that one. Yep. Um, however, um, we would um, like to see some bluebells and wild garlic in the area of the playground. Um, if the parish council resolved to plant bluebells and wild garlic there with the money that is from this um, the front group, then we would certainly be able to provide some people to help with that, as I'm sure lots of other villagers would be willing to help as well, but would rather it became a parish council thing because it's parish council land that's a happy point, rather than us taking responsibility for it. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's helpful to know because um, Archie, when I was reading about it, bluebells, I haven't got a problem with wild garbage. RHS says they can be a problem. Spread, it's a, yeah. it's not very but the community group <laughs> telling me the community garden is saying they won't be responsible for managing the wild garlic should it be planted. Mm -hmm. okay, so if you just want to plant bluebells, then that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I was just 
Just part of the general discussion. I put that out there. Any any comment from Ian? Ian was Ian was at the meeting. Was Ian pro? He was pro. Point. Point. <laughs> Ian's a man. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. Point. He's, He's not, not here for his, to say anything, is he? No. But I respect his comments. You respect his comments. Don't have I'm not happy. I'm happy with bluebells. I'm not happy with wild garlic. The only thing thinking of the wild garlic and the smell of it next to the bluebell is something people want. But, you know, I don't. Too much garlic. Wild garlic and bluebells grow companionably together, apparently. Yeah. It's only a small area, so presumably, if it does get a problem, it can be wiped out. We were passing that on the parish council to be responsible for. And volunteers. I mean, I think it's questionable how well they grow because it's so polite, isn't it? Is it? It's going to take some time to, to get them to grow. I don't think they'll establish particularly readily. It'd be nice if they were there, certainly because they're ivy at the moment. Well, you can buy bluebells in the green and you can plant them in January. Which is great. Right. And they look lovely. Hang on. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Yeah. Save me walking out of January. <laughs> look at them. What's the other white plant? The chokes. Snowdrops. Yes, why not snowdrops? That's why. Those bluebells. They're more beautiful. Ivy come down here at the back. I think they're more beautiful. Anyway, what's the <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, any comment from the yeah. yeah. No. No. Neither way? Neither way. Right? Okay, so the proposal is that with the item on the agenda, we accept that the, um, the ditch work by the community garden is scrapped. So should we vote on that as a separate item? Um, you've withdrawn the item from the agenda, we don't have to vote. Fine, okay. Alright, so the proposal will be then to plant Sorry, I have to stop because it says they're British bluebells because we don't want one of those foreign ones. We want British, British bluebells. This is not surprising. Sorry. Well, given that you've mentioned snowdrops, what about the proposal being to plant indigenous plants as advised by Ian and whatever? I'm going with what's on the agenda, which is the proposal is to plant some British bluebells and wild garlic in the ground. Anybody? Also, you know, as long as Ian's having grains. I'm, yeah, I don't know you answered that question. Um, all those in favour? Three. All those against? And all those abstaining? Two. There's a point of information as well that as from this meeting, um, there was some land identified that belongs to the county council, and so we were talking to the parish council, to the county council about daffodils and wildflowers on some verges approaching Hilton, and on a tiny bit of grass at the crossroads, and on the land that's owned by the county council behind Smeefield and Pluckdale in a triangle. Yes, I know the triangle. Any news? The county council. Um, were interested, have sent an application form and said it's a matter of parish council to check their approval. We haven't had it already. No. Right, so the next agenda item is to discuss and decide on the budget for the 2022-2023 financial year. <coughs> and to discuss and decide on precepts for the precept is the next item in 2022-2023. Three financial year, which was recommended at £31,550. They had the budget came up um, at the previous meeting, didn't it? And it was deferred whilst we waited for more information regarding maintenance contract. So the budget is shown to you as a draft budget with. Budgeted income of £33,350, which is up from the precept of £31,550 because it includes firework money in and therefore will include firework money out. Continuing balance budget at 33350 going out, which also includes fireworks money of £18,000. So 
Within that is a figure for the maintenance contract of £10,000, and we know from our earlier discussion, if we accept the, co the quotes that are out there at the moment, we can maintain our current, we can go forward with that figure. But it does represent an increase in the pre of £950 to balance it out. Comments? You can do both art items at once, and we'll vote on them individually afterwards. I think since we met last, inflation's gone up, hasn't it? So, I, mean, I think it'd be difficult to increase the budget. And we didn't increase the preset last year. Indeed, but I, would think we, I don't think we can, in, we can put in a higher budget because no. uh, at this late stage, so I would be happy to accept the budget as drafted that we discussed in October. Any comments? Don't come on my left, maybe to my right. No? Okay. So just on the insurance. Yes. The fireworks were to pay additional amounts. Mm -hmm. right. Is that included in the fireworks budget? That would come out of the fireworks budget. You spent less than £1,800 on yeah, yeah. insurance this year. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That works, doesn't it? So, first of all, then, item 147, I propose that we accept the budget for the 2022-2023 financial year of £33,350. Round second, then. All those in favour? Thank you. And then that leads us on to the following item, which is item 148, which is to... Um, I propose that we apply for a preset of £31,550, which has to be put in by the 17th of December, and represents an increase of £950 on the preset that was set two years ago. Graham seconding that. All those in favour? Thanks everybody, thank you. Excellent. And Nicola, you'll kindly submit the necessary request form to Huntington District Council for that. Number 149. Good one, this isn't it? bid for HGV. I mentioned it earlier. We've got to the stage where um, we want people <coughs> to uh, comment on this by the 17th of December. And um, we've got a leaflet which we're going to put out and send an email out to people. It's on the website, it's on um, Facebook, it's been spread on. Facebook by other people around. So we'd like to, um, again, we'll just say that we want people to uh, respond, please. And if you're talking to neighbours, you know, to talk to neighbours at the moment? Yeah, you are. Um, please ask them to do so. Everybody see, really. Helen. Yes, the Highways and Transport Committee from the County Council are meeting tomorrow, and I, out of interest, looked at their papers. Our LHI bid has now got an amber status rather than green status because of this consultation. Yeah. So um, I think it's absolutely vital that people do, as you have said, um, engage with the consultation. Yeah, because they can't make a decision on it tomorrow, can they? Because the consultation's no. open until the 17th of right. December. So. But I'm just intrigued as to why they think they've moved it down from green, which it was last month, to an amber. The need on that is about the timescales and so whether they think the project will be complete within the financial year. So because this is a project that has to go up to consultation, that then delays the project, which means that they are saying, that the Amber is saying that they think it's possible that they won't complete the project within the financial year. No, okay. Are we also um, discussing what we were saying in the parish council? <laughs> We're not going to send that in, eh? Um, sorry, mine just um, dropped off my phone. Um, yes, do we need to send it in the National Council? We should. We should send in a, a um, something or other. I think it should be open to the PR website. And yeah? Therefore, people would see what sort of things we've said. Yeah? Hilton Parish Council strongly supports the application to, because it's our application in the first place, isn't it? So do we need to say anything more? Potentially not, but why not? It doesn't harm to yeah. put a statement on there, does it? Well, the recommendation is that the Parish Council should comment in favour of this consultation, is that? 
Oh, the, at the bottom. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Not how counties should come. Yeah, okay. Looking how we, how we are leaflets. There's still four areas to be delivered. What's well, so yeah. half Well, one area is going to get a different instruction. Okay, I have some space. Mm. Okay, okay. We'll have a little review of that by Thursday, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I suppose first of all then is to resolve that the parish council will submit a little statement to um, CC Sim, to Mr. Steve Cox, mm -hmm. and say that um, Hilton Parish Council wholeheartedly supports its request for a ban on energy use through 24 hour ban on energy use through the village. Do we give this a reason to this? No? Okay. Because we deserve it? Because we were there? Oh, we've tried. Yeah, we tried. It's got worse, isn't it? So. Yeah. It's been something that's been going on for so many years. Mm. Um, we would like it to be done, please. Mm. Um, oh, or do we put in, because there is now a much more suitable alternative group. Yes, thank you for A1 387. <coughs> It needs to be on the website ASAP, and I think it would be worth putting on a few pointers because I think it's all about saying we support it, but I think to help parishioners put something in other than just I support it, it'd be nice to have a few okay. key pointers. I mean, there's nothing there. We would have put it on the other side, there would be information on the other side, wouldn't it? Because hopefully people will read that and they might not copy what we've written, but it might give them a few ideas. As okay, we'll get something out. On yeah. the, along those lines of uh, that Hill Parish Council supports the ban on HGVs, the 24 hour ban on HGVs through the village filter, because there is an alternative we using yes. A roads, yeah. and that the, council, the village has been blighted by HGVs for yeah. two million years. And maybe you put, put the numbers down? No, because people might not know, might they? Well, we had some numbers where we put yeah. the LHI bit. In. Indeed. We could repeat those, couldn't we? Yeah. Yeah. This is going to Steve Cox, isn't it? Yeah. This is going to Steve it's Cox. Not public and it's going to go on our <laughs> website. It's going on our website. Oh, right, okay. You're saying it's hopefully that people will go onto our website to see it. Just, even if it just encourages one person to. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what do I write? It's dark. Here's some words that you can use. <laughs> Or words um, are, you, are you happy to do that with the clock? Yeah, I'll do it with the clock. We'll get it done. Thank you. We'll get it done. Thank you. We'll get it done. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll get it done in the next couple of days, not tomorrow morning. Um, so that leads. So our result, we do that. I propose that we do that. That's, that's, the, that's the word. It's the wording, it's a mask. The is it, did away, say, it? it did say propose when it left the map. Mask translated it into result. Have a second in that, all those in favour. Right, next is the new LHI bid we have in at the moment, which is was put in for two purposes. One was to get to speed them across the room, reduced to 30 miles per hour. And um, the other part of that bid was to seek. Cambridge County Council, or ask Cambridge County Council to um, do something with the service through the Ford. This is correct, isn't it? And they came back to you, didn't they, Nicola? They did. And said, um, and they said that, that, you tell us what they said. So the um, maintenance manager has come back to me to say that uh, he doesn't believe it should be a parish council responsibility to look at the surface of the board. It should be a highway's responsibility to maintain it. So he is now looking into solutions to um, either upgrade the surface or cover it with something called texture blast, um, both of which will effectively remove the smooth surface and uh, give a bit of grip. Um, but local projects have then asked that the element of the board is removed from the LHI bid because the maintenance manager is looking into ways that the council council can use the issue. And to 
just amend the LHOB to look at it 30 mile an hour across the green. I would have thought so, on this basis, that all we need to do is make sure that as a parish council we, we chase them from time to time to say, well, what is happening with this wonderful new service across the board, please? So I propose that we accept this amendment to our vote board. I propose it is a proposal, isn't it? Um, I propose the parish council accepts or amends its LHI bid to uh, just be for 39 miles across the green. Have a thing, Raj. All those in favour? is to receive correspondence regarding the recent RSPB bird survey on the green. Did you know that recently there's been an RSPB bird survey on the green? And the results are in. Jackdaws, wood pigeons, wrens, black caps, house sparrows, robins, chaffinch, they're all birds. Oh, that's because it's a bird survey. And so uh, the figure in your um, supporting documents tells you that there were 22 species of bird recorded, and the majority the peace town were jackdaws and wood pigeons. So I resolved the parish council accepts the recent the correspondence regarding the recent ISPB survey. I'll second you with that. Thank you. And um, a grand second. All those in favour of it so. um, next one is to receive oh no we've done that. To discuss and decide upon requesting insurance and risk assessments from Hilton Peace Week and Hilton Summer Ball Committees. Ah, now I was a little bit hasty last month when I um, went through the, uh, the requests from the board and the um, Peace Week. They asked for permission to use the green and we just said yes. But what we forgot, what I forgot to ask for was um, that we get there or that they submit their risk assessments and copies of their insurance, which we have done pre every year previous. And I phoned to Nicola the next day and said, Ooh, I forgot to ask for those. I'll have to go on the agenda for next month. So that's the proposal. We are Hilton Feast Week and the Hilton Summer Board Committee to make sure that they send us over copies of their insurance and risk assessments. Can I just question what we do with them? Are we going to check them? Do we have someone? But of course, Nicola's going to pass the Peace Week one to me to look at because she'll be involved in the drawing up of the yes. And if there's any queries, I should read to the parish council. Well, I say it's, it's all about getting a risk assessment, but it's got to be checked that he's actually covering all those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they both have insurance at this point. No, yeah. So this is more about at the time, not now. Yeah. Okay. So prior prior to the event, yeah, okay. when it is convenient, they can send over yeah. risk the assessment and, and insurance. Yeah, so I propose that. Have a second it all in favour. Uh, the next one is the uh, response to the Huntingdonshire District Council Landscape and Townscape Supplementary Planning Document Consultation Planning Committee met and resolved innovation by the Parish Council is as we are a small settlement not earmarked for development, Hilton Parish Council has no comment. That's a proposal. Massive document, lots of reference to big towns, nothing about hills in it. So it doesn't really give it up to the only for us, so didn't see much point in coming to one of the people's affairs. But I was sadly wasn't at that meeting, so I feel very potent. But that was the recommendation. If you'd like to propose, I don't know, shall I? I can still yeah, propose it. I'm proposing that we accept the recommendation from the planning committee, so I'll be asking to look at it. In the first place, I'm going to second your proposal. All in favour? Uh, item 154 is to receive correspondence from the community road watch. You've had that in your supporting documents. I resolve that we, it, um, I propose that we receive the correspondence from the community road watch.
Can I just ask about the letters bit where they say, if you'd like us to send letters to the owners of the commercial vehicles, let me know, otherwise I will assume that you will do to protect your residents. Letters come from the police. So she could tell them that. Because they're making an assumption that we're not going to do We have a police approved community mm -hmm. report and speed watch. And um, we'll stick with that. So should we just correct them about their assumption? No, we're just receiving their correspondence. That's what I'm talking Or proposing. <laughs> I'm going to have to go that way. I'll second it. And you can put them to my left? No? Okay, so I'm proposing, I propose that Hill and Parish Council uh, receives correspondence from Community Road Watch. Grand second bid. All in favour? All against? To discuss and decide upon attendance at the Cambridgeshire County Council Local Council Conference on Friday, the 14th of January 2022. So there's a. There's a local county local council's conference. This used to be held at the Burgess Hall, or has been held at the Bar Burgess Hall. Um, it's trying to think, not in January, like, I think it was November, December it was held before, I think. I've never been to it in person, I went to the remote one. I've been to it in the past, so um, any number of county, uh, parish councillors can go. If you'd like to go, Please let them come out. It is virtual, isn't it? It is virtual, yes. It's all day. All day. Well, it's not all day, it's nine till four. Nine till four. Nine till four. Nine a.m. till four p.m. Hmm? And you log into each room through the platform. Yes. So if you'd like to go, please let Nicola know. Hmm. I'd rather have that body than to discuss that in and for you to have to say, well, I don't want to put you on the spot because if you want to go, I'm not prepared to do that. I would rather um, you let people know if you'd like to go. <coughs> so my proposal would be, if you'd like to, uh, that, um, I propose that we resolve to say that if you want to go, you let them know. So can I. Thank you. All those in favour of that? Good. And in fact, that will be the same yeah. comment for the next meeting that's been proposed, which is the Police and Crime Commissioner's um, virtual round table on the 7th of February, which is in fact, oh look at that, it runs from 6 o'clock till half past 7. So you then come down to your office. Run down <laughs> to the parish council meeting. So again, I'll propose that if you'd like to attend that meeting, you let me. All the paper. Can I just ask a question? Heather, did you go to that? I did. Yeah. It's just a thought as I was going. And the other one as well. Don't both of them. Don't feel that you've done so. You can always go again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, discuss and decide upon a response to the Greater Cambridge Partnerships, making connections and have your say on greener travel and Greater Cambridge's consultation, which closes on Monday the 20th of December. Making connections, have your say on greener travel and Greater Cambridge. Do we, this, not, this isn't the thing we did, No, was it? we did the local transport and connectivity plan. That was much the same as this, was it? Greener transport and whether we fought there should be greener transport, we said yes. Um, so the consultation sets out three main areas on which we'd like to hear people's thoughts. A new bus network, and we can't reply there saying what's a bus. At the heart of the proposal is an expanded and transformed bus network offering more frequent services with longer operating hours, more rural connections, which is supposed to be good, and new routes into our growing employment sites. The second item is funding transport improvements. A new public transport network will need funding and to lower congestion to run. There are two main ways to free up road space and raise money to invest in better bus services and more cycling and walking infrastructure, a road charging zone or additional parking charges. 
We'd like to hear what people think about these. This is for Cambridge, isn't it? Yeah. And the third one I'm talking about is better cycling or walking routes in high quality public spaces. Lower traffic levels would create more opportunity to improve routes for people cycling and walking. Lower traffic levels and better air quality would also create more opportunities to provide high quality public spaces for people to enjoy. It's very idealistic, isn't it? For Greater Cambridge. What about if you encourage people not to travel, they won't come in and support the high street? Possibly. The trouble is, one of these things is that they, they obviously, it's the funding, isn't it? I'm not sure that we can support that as a parish council, but I would be happy to put it on the council website so people knew about it and they could comment. Well, would we not want to um, make a comment about that we would like to see an improved bus network? including more rural connections. Indeed, but doesn't it all come down to the fact that this is going to cost money and they're going to raise the money by charging? A road charging is that? Yes. Don't go to Cambridge. Yes, I mean, by supporting one, are you supporting the other? Well, that's what we don't know, unless mm -hmm. we have a look at it. What does the... Spread charge more parking. Mm. Mm. This is great with your support and sharing this consultation with people living in your parish. Either on your website or via social media. Yeah. So I mean, stick I would, it up. I would have thought that if we voted to put it on the website, then people could respond accordingly. Yeah, and do you think the parish council needs to make a response? If you better bus routes, it would be a good thing to do soon. But certainly, um, and I think we could say that we don't really want it to be done by additional parking charges or... But that's, Great the, that's the worry, isn't it? Being yeah. realistic, you're not going to get more buses with nothing. We've been through this a lot, we've done this yeah. before. We know we want cycle routes, we know we need to get more and more buses. There isn't, there, there isn't a lot of people that justify using it financially to make it viable. Uh, do we want more parking, high cost parking, particularly? Uh, particularly, we are all, most of us depend on that. Actually, what could happen if we have places, we'll still have to go out and park, it'll cost us more. Yeah. But then we need to be careful. Because which bit of that is green, or is it just like the people make money? Yeah. Yeah. So, a resolution would be to put this, to flag this on our website and on our Facebook page for people to respond to if they so wish. So that's resolution one. Mm. That was one. Proposal one. Do you want to just yeah. that? Yes. I would have taken that one. Thank you. Have you got proposal one? Yes. Thank you. All those in favour of proposal one, which is to put it on our website and on our social media, so that we flag post, sign posting for people to go and have a look. And the other one is whether Hilton Parish Council makes comment on this consultation. I think even, I take Bob's point that even just flagging that more bus routes would be helpful to people in the village, particularly young people, um, would be a good thing to do. It's very early stages yet, we don't know what the rest of it is going to entail, but just saying it would be helpful. So I'm going to propose that Hill Parish Council, being a the auspices of myself and Nicola, will go on and with this consultation we will make comments under the first item which says new bus, bus network, we'll say yes we'd like to see better bus network in the rural locations if possible and we will say that we do not have comments regarding road charging. Do you not have comments or do you not support road charging? This is where we need to get on our response mm -hmm. because it needs to be a thorough thought our response to represent the parish right now. Yeah. I don't feel like we've got enough information so no I've got opinions but yeah. You know, You've got your well, the worry is if you support part of it and don't reference the other, you might just say, they could come by later and say, oh, we've got all the problem. you've got to now pay 10 quid to get this in eyes because we've got charging or you can take the bus for a fire. Yeah, and actually they could say you asked for that, so we've just got to be really careful. Okay. That's my yeah. yeah, okay, so you would say, no, don't do the consultation, as a parent can. Unless, unless we're going to get people together and properly think through this and the impact yeah. of it, okay. I would say don't right. bother. Monday the 20th. Today's Monday the 6th. Did we do it next week? 
if we want to. If we want to. Yeah, so there's a thing to think about. People want to get together, as you did in the planning committee, and discuss the response on it. I'm just throwing these ideas out, Chairman. Ed? Ed? We'll probably all roll on this one. Get together and have a look at it. Yeah. Okay. I think more detail is coming out. So how would that practically work? We'd have to have yeah, a working meeting. group. <coughs> We'd then come back to council. The easiest resolution. way to do would just go straight to a meeting and do it at a meeting. Or, or, or we do nothing and yes. see what happens. Let them do the leg work before we do the leg work. It's only consultation, isn't it? It is a consultation. I, I would be happy to just do what we've recommended so far, or proposed so far. Which is to put it on the website and okay. Yeah. Right. So individuals can respond in. Yeah. So that's what they're looking for, isn't it? And so we haven't got time to solicit individuals to get a proper view of that. No, because so it's so going to try and do that in the time, which will be a lot of work for what value. Mm -hmm. Or we're just going to let them let people put it if they want it and sit out and see what happens. Yeah. Let's be realistic. Nothing's going to come off this <laughs> for us. All right. This it is Greater Cambridge. <coughs> so the proposal on the second part of this then is not to reply to the consultation. I'll second that. So there's a proposal, there's a second for it. All those in favour of that? Three, four. You know the text now? One. Right. The next item on the agenda is uh, Pavilion Working Group. Pavilion. Pavilion Working Group. Which is, to, uh, so there's four items on the agenda here. The one is to discuss and decide whether to apply to extend the planning commission. Two is to agree the proposed specification of one and two with their associated drawings. Three is to grant permission for the clerk to obtain quotes for the specifications above. And four is to grant permission for the clerk to apply for grants based on these quotes. Yeah, have you got something? Do you, do you want to? I ask for this item to be deferred? Um, due to a technical issue with uh, getting associated drawings across. Um, I'd like to propose uh, an extraordinary meeting if we could do before the 18th of December. Uh, I don't think it would take too long. But uh, we just don't have the uh, plans associated drawings available at the moment. It's been fully it's it's discussed, it, basically. Um, there was also something that came through which said that given the list of works in 1 and 2, mm -hmm. we won't need planning permission because it's, we won't need to extend the planning permission because it's internal and not changing the outlook. Yeah. Is that okay? That's what Karen's talking about with under, under, is that you can't extend planning permission, you either start material works, yeah. Um, or you have to reapply for planning permission if it expires. Okay. However, specification one is all internal, so you yeah. don't require planning permission for that. So only if you went for specification two and started doing the cladding and the, the pillars, that you would actually need planning permission. Oh, okay. okay, that's the external. For the external works. Two, I think three, there was a third one. A three, one and two got a mouth out, didn't they? Ah, of course, that's yes, of course. One. Yes, one and two is now one. Yeah, three is now two. Three is now, yes. So for one and two, which is a new one, internal, yeah. we don't need an extension. No. So there's no rush. There's no rush. Perfect. What, what can we do to technically start it? Not Because it's so vague, isn't it? It is. Uh, so, the, yeah, the material works, doesn't have to be a lot, but um, I did go to Kieran with that information, and you've got his response in your supporting document. Okay. Okay. So I'm sure, because if we're not going to do the material works to the outside under specification two, then there is no work to start. Yeah. So the heat off, really, isn't it? Yeah. Basically. Well, so the heat, heat is off. Oh, heat is off, yeah, indeed. Right. So we don't need planning permission for anything on specification one. No, it's all internal. 
So even the windows, because if the shutters are retained, you're not changing the external appearance of it. Yes, so you keep the boarding. Yeah. So point one is not relevant anymore. Agenda item uh, point four. Yeah, that's no longer relevant. So do you want me to propose that we ignore item point well, one? Well, Ed made a proposal about deferring this item, and now you were discussing it. So have you withdrawing that proposal? We didn't. We didn't vote on that. We didn't vote on that. We haven't quite got to that though. yet. Um, Point two is the issue because I can't or we can't really present any drawings at this moment. Okay. So that's the only issue at the moment, but if we can skip that and um, propose that quotes be sought for specification mm -hmm. one and two. No, just for one. I believe it's one for the Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah that's just for the one. amalgamation. And uh, supply for grants based on quotes. Mm -hmm. I think we can probably go with that. Because so you just agree the specification is based on the description as opposed to the drawing? Um, yes. well, the you, can't can get, you can't get the quotes until the No, yeah, this is the thing. I think, I think we can get through part of this, but not all of it. Yeah, I still think we need to come back and. Okay. Just put this into another meeting. But the urgency is out, so yeah. uh, any, it doesn't need to be extraordinary. Any urgency needs to be done. No. Maybe put this into February. Okay, so here's a proposal that um, the, the uh, work on the pavilion is deferred, the discussion on the work on the pavilion is deferred until the February meeting, when hopefully the drawings will be available to support or certainly the discussion. Thank you. Eight second it. Eight. All those in favour? Yeah. Cool. Can I ask that when it does come back, we have a vision as to what the pavilion is going to be used for, so that we can understand the drawings sure. as well? Sure, absolutely. Right. The next item on the agenda is to discuss and decide if any actions of the outline. Planning application for 16 houses on West End, Church End, West of Westwood, no? West of which would now, um, I've told you everything. Little test. <laughs> okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, um, we discussed at the last meeting, we discussed this at the last, or well, we were going to discuss at the last meeting, Doug Jew suggested we had a meeting with him to discuss what had happened at the judicial review. We thought we'd blown it. It isn't that because we can if the decision of notice hasn't been published yet, and the judicial review on the planning application has to be done within or applied for within six weeks of that um, decision to uh, his decision notice is issued, so it hasn't been done. So Nicholas spoke to the chap at Hamlet Witten, spoke to the solicitors that he had used and within your supporting documents you have the terms of business of that solicitor, the um, letter of engagement, the judicial review process, you have the minutes of the various meetings of the DMC, the ones that Graham, was at, uh, Graham and I were at. Um, there's still a question about who actually spoke on behalf of Hill Parish Council. I see in the solicitor's letter he mentioned that it was Graham but it wasn't because it was read but that probably doesn't matter too much, does it? Uh, I did ask that that was changed, but obviously it hasn't been. Yes, somebody else said they were going to get that changed, didn't they? Mm -hmm. well, I haven't been a week. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Does, yeah. that make, does that make it incorrect? I mean, they're all challenging it to being a correct document, and they're all challenging it. It's not a material error, though, is it? Like, I think it might be too it's materially different. Now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Graham the wrong sense. I talked a load of nonsense. Um, Six weeks. I just said that. Um, so we both, at both meetings, we questioned whether or not mm -hmm. the thing was outside the rural exception scheme. That's what most of them. The question of sustainable transport and the fact that it's um, judicial. Oh, yes, because they, HTC tried to rolled in 
to a, to a butting parishes to the application to try and make it fit. Um, so, and then you've got a nice, you've got a copy of a nice long letter from um, the solicitors to um, Huntingdon, Par uh, Huntingdon District Council, seeking lots of information from them and giving them a deadline of 4 p.m. on the 9th of December. And HGC had come back and said, we can't do that. We need an extension to the 15th of December. And the solicitor is saying, uh, yes. yes. Agree to the agree to the delay or the extension on the request on the basis that they have to take they won't issue the note the decision notice. And to get to all that state, as I said earlier, it will, um, the solicitor has quoted us a thousand pounds to get that. The letter that he's written is pretty um, pretty good in that, I think. Gets right to the heart of the thing. It'll give us an idea whether or not we um, there is a chance of a judicial review going forward. When the solicitors come back with further information and HGC come back with further information, we'll call a meeting as necessary yeah. and keep the village informed okay. and decide whether or not to, how we could fund it. Have you had much response from the village? About the We've had parish, a parishioner at least. There's been a couple of parishioners. Right. So we've got the right track to, to question all. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's one of the points that I looked at in the minutes is that at least a couple of members of the DMC changed, changed horses between the two meetings, which was substantially... It's not like a different crowd turned up. Um, I say it was seven or seven at the first meeting, and nine and three at the second one. Yeah. And there were only two absences, or abstentions, or so two absentees. That's so good at that. At least two people, if not more, changed horses when it was substantially the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So something is not right. So, and the solicitors are asking for a copy of the legal challenge and have said, well, actually, from your minutes, the way it was processed was correct. So it, there should be no legal challenge to why, yes, you can reconsider it. Which, this is where the judicial review stands, is that you're questioning the legality of the decision that was made at the Hartford meeting. Yeah, but can we, can we put in the fact that councillors change their mind? At least two councillors change their mind. I think they've got the right to change mind, haven't they? No, because it's substantially the same. It's substantially, it was the same application. And that, that was the point, wasn't it? It wasn't an application change, it was the fact that the what was resolved at the meeting was unclear. The application was the same. And they and they discussed it in the same manner. But I said at least two councillors changed changed horses. Well at the minute you can see what um, what the solicitors have asked for. Well, it's, it's on their list, so I think yeah. it's important. Isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. It isn't something that the solicitors have raised as a point. Right. Well, I've raised it. They can go for, if you like. It's the question of the fact that they've made a decision in August, yes. and they've effectively then made the same decision, or considered the same decision yes. again two yes. months later, yes. which should be illegal if the first decision is correct. Indeed. So, uh, firstly, I'd like you to ratify that we're spending up to £1,000 plus VAT on engaging with this firm's solicitors to um, establish whether there is a case for a judicial review, to come back to the Parish Council to discuss as appropriate. I'll have it All those in favour? There we go. You can choose Graham or Heather. For okay, second in that. The next item on the agenda is to receive the financial reports, which you can receive. Any questions on the financial report? That's not financial reports. That's it. No, that's financial reports. Okay, so we're not doing badly at the present time. Mm -hmm. We are obviously what we've actually spent this year is budget. Um, we've just agreed that we'll spend a bit more on the tree money hasn't come through yet, has it? The payments haven't come through on the tree money. 
and uh, additionally... It's quite common for those to fall into the next financial year and then the to reserve for them. Um, and then the other thing we haven't got, uh, that obviously is the recovery of the mazes to come through and there is also the path. So that will bring up the spend. And of course there are still three months of, four months of spending to go. Three. End of March. December, January, February, March. Four. Right. We're only just in December. December expenditure is... It's close. Three and a bit months spending to go. So, um, any questions on the financial reports? Then I propose we accept the financial reports. Have a second in those? All in favour? Right, uh, the next item is that we do we resolve that we propose to right, propose that we receive these monies. We've received them. You've just notified. No, I'm notified we've received £2,319.68 pence in bonfire night gate tapings. It's fantastic. And £14.70 for feast week for electricity contributions for feast week. For feast weekend. Feast weekend. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, bonfire is very good, isn't it? That's a it's a record. It's a record breaker. It's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, and how many people? I think I know. We'll put it out there. I can't remember it. Nine hundred or something, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think I remember. So the council's worked well. Well, it depends. Did you add them up? Yeah, I think it was a yeah estimate. Probably yeah. right. Oh, yeah, we, we didn't know before in previous years, that's good. Thank you. No, it's very, 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 very good. So thank you again to everybody. Can we write and thank the Firework Committee? Mm -hmm. Could I resolve with you? Mm -hmm. We'll put it in, I'll put it on the council's items. <coughs> you can't be able to have a discussion like that. You have to do that, Kevin. I will. Well, I did very carefully. Um, you wait and see how I work. <laughs> 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 right, um, number 162 on the um, item is uh, gender is to approve payments. So there's the number of payments, so JSC, 660 pounds, £606, pounds. Ecotricity, 12.85, payroll, 8.99.27, street lighting, 134.49, Microsoft, 11 pounds 28, Bollard and Postcrete, £27.24. Diffusion tubes, £45.60. Postage, £85. Pence. Um, leaflet printing, 40 quid. Solicitors, 500 of the 1,000. Yeah. Payment on account. Payment on account. I propose that we pay those items. So have a second meeting, all in favour. Excellent. Right, the next item on the agenda is number 163. Wednesday, last Wednesday. Last Wednesday I attended issue specific hearing number five on the A428 upgrade, specifically the section that was talking about construction and traffic. Um, specifically, on the agenda there's a couple of items I've commented, there was a number of items I commented, I spoke up at them when we got to the second item expressing the desire that the planning inspector tell highways England that um, any construction traffic coming from the north be routed down the A1307 down to the construction site well, and avoid the B1040 from Hilton. Um, interestingly, a representative from highways agency said there are traffic restrictions on routes but they don't go as far as Hilton. So I suggested that during the construction of the A14 highways, as it was then, had said it would not have any vehicles coming through Hilton, but it failed to keep that going up. And the planning inspector asked um, Cambridge County Council for its views. Cambridge County Council supported my views on the likelihood that any and materials being taken from around St. Ives area would come the main, the primary route would be north south down the 1040, and they also agreed that 
during the construction of the A14, the issue of construction traffic coming through the village was one of the biggest problems. Um, it was, I mentioned that we were also looking at, the, we're trying to get 24 hour van on HGVs through the village. The planning inspector was interested in that. The guys from Cam the people from Cambridge County Council who were there didn't know about that particular thing because they were a different department. But they're going to go back. I see from the planning inspectorate notes from the meeting that they have said, uh, which I shall say it's number 12. CCC to confirm the current status and details of the proposal to restrict HGV traffic through Hilton, and that's been put down for CCC, and the applicant should consider whether construction HGV traffic should be subject to route restriction through Hilton. And that is all down to deadline six. Now, deadline six is the uh, 14th of December. So I'm proposing that Hilton Parish Council write to um, the planning inspector just to reiterate what was said at the meeting. Okay, so basically our chairman and Peter Bleak attended the online meeting on the hearing, issue specific hearing dated the 1st of um, December and requested that the planning inspector approve that that the construction traffic doesn't come through the village and we just wanted to write to confirm that this is the request we're making given that the guy from National Highway said restrictions on traffic can come up through Hilton. I wrote you this this afternoon so you can have this if we agree the proposed, proposed wording. Um, highlighting that when they built the 847 bypass they didn't uh, print they said that they would ensure construction traffic did not pass through Hilton, and it did, and it was a constant source of irritation within the village. Hilton PC believes, as did Cambridge County Council, that construction vehicle uh, materials for some upgrade may well come from St. Anthony's area, and we asked for it to be routed down the 1307, 1198, rather than the 1040. Uh, and we are still pursuing this 24 hour ban. But that might not be concluded before the end of the planning inspectorate's inquiry. And there we are. And that we, Hilton Parish Council, looks to us forward to assuming the planning inspector's support in this matter. Is it worth having the sort of thing an annoyance to those, to those damage done to those and things? Like, yeah, comment because that's the cost, and they'll have to think yeah. about it if they let it happen. They've still got three charges, yeah. damage done to verges and roads and roads and roads. Still to be. And listed buildings. Correct. What damage was done to listed buildings? No, this is actual. This is actual. This is actual damage happened, wasn't that? I think they're, they're interested in actuals rather than. Yes, sorry, Grant. There's a slight anomaly. But you refer to construction traffic. Yes. They refer to HGV traffic. Now. A van, because that was the other thing, they had lots of A14 vans going through, which technically is not okay. Yeah, um, so I mean, maybe that's worth clarifying. It's not yes. just the HGVs, it's everything in construction business. Well, 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 actually, well, I guess what we really want, I mean, it'd be nice to stop everything, but I just think to be, you know, we seem to be being unreasonable. We said that, I don't know. I, I, I wrote, look, after I found this bit on the planning inspector, I said. Uh, we see it's indicated including number one item 12 for the matters of issues specific here in number five, but with the main emphasis on the being on the position regarding the HGV man, we would like to see this restriction. And at that point you could say on HGVs or construction traffic being imposed on the applicant by the planning inspector. Yeah. Well, I think when we had a conversation with April and they said that the construction traffic was bans as well. Mm -hmm. And all vans were going to have a letter inside the van to have where they should be going. But mm. it'd be another sort of three or four year process, won't it? Well, it will be, yeah. yeah. And we are seeking a ban on heavy goods vehicles. We're asking planning inspectorate to tell highways not to put their construction vehicles through yes. the so construction traffic. Spill out and safety yeah. and for the construction traffic. Yes. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> See, on top of that, we are going to get inconvenienced by diversion, road flows and things. I mean, it's a... Yeah. Okay, so happy that we send the letter? 
basically do as read, read out, but just tweaking it a little bit to say it's construction traffic, including HGV. And the damage. And the damage, yes. And the man, the verges, and the road. <coughs> yeah? Yeah. Second that. Rob, second it. All in favour? Thank you very much. Right then. Last item on the agenda is council's items. Et. I have nothing to do. Rob. Just referencing the road watch comment around the perceived dangerous incident. I'm just thinking if we hand out uh, some equipment, perhaps we need to consider how it is as well, or some wording that makes sure that people do safe things. So you get a risk assessment? Any equipment that don't have that risk assessment that goes with it? I'm just <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Yes. Probably put it on the agenda. Thank you. And I was going to ask about leaflets, but I know I've got the answer to that earlier. Um, yes, a few months, seven years ago, I guess, an LHIP, I understand, was put in for the bollards on Gravely Way, which then got knocked down on several occasions. This last week they've been replaced with two pathetic black posts with tiny bits of red going across the top. Um, one of the residents down that road contacted Cambridge County Council to say what's going on and was advised that him, the parish council would need to put in another LHI bid in order to <coughs> change these bollards. And I, um, given that the LHI bid was the first thing to put them in and they've replaced them with bollards which weren't the same, as the original bollards, um, I don't think that's good enough. Thank you. Anything else? No. I've got about six or seven. <laughs> Great. Uh, the village sign is on the verge of going back up, and it looks very good. On the I understand it's going to be <laughs> <laughs> on the verge. I understand it's going to be going up next weekend. Um, Christmas lights up, thank you to the volunteers who did that. Um, they look very good. Our uh, county councillor advised us that there is a quite a bit of traction at the moment for the 24 20 mile an hour speed limit campaign through the villages of Cambridgeshire. There might be some more news than that in the new year. Uh, there is another consultation going around which came in yesterday which is the draft sustainable growth I can't remember, uh, something or other potential for the combined authority closing day end of the year 31st is it 31st of December or am I mixing that up with the other one let me just look and see so as you say have your say on our budget Thank you. Sorry, it's come back. So, 31st of December. So, this is uh, delighted to be consulting on both our draft project, budget, and medium term financial plan and our draft sustainable growth ambition statement for the 31st of December 2021. Um, I'm going to ask Nicola to reply to that. Consultation by the 31st of December. Um, I'm going to write, ask Nicola to write to the Parliament's Committee and thank them for such a magnificent job. Um, traffic bollards on Gravely Way are on the agenda for the next meeting. And then the other thing I have to mention is I received notification from a previous chairman, no, previous um, treasurer of Feastwick, just wanting the parish council to be aware. A number of years ago, the Feastwick committee, as was, uh, set aside, raised its fundraising over a number of years, set aside an amount of money, £10,000, to be available to Feast Week. So I'm advised to Feast Week, should Feast Week go ahead and fail, there would be money available to 
bail out the committee members of any financial liability. That money is still there. The uh, former treasurer wanted me to advise the parish council because if this money is never used, let's say fee week no longer goes ahead, so there's no drain, no call for it, uh, the two beneficiaries of that fund are uh, the town trust and the parish council. There we are. And that is the, that's the end of my council's items. Thank you very much. Very interesting way that the town trust approving fee week, isn't it? Meeting closed. Thank you very much, everybody.